What's the most disturbing secret you've discovered about someone close to you? My great-grandmother was married to three different people at the same time. The men were from different branches of the military. She was collecting all three of their paychecks at a time. One night as a kid I heard my parents having an explosive argument in their bedroom which suddenly went quiet. The door was closed and locked. I found out during a drunk phone call from my mother it was because she attempted to shoot my father in the face with a .303 but it didn't go off when she pulled the trigger as there were no bullets. They were both horrified and just stared at each other apparently. They're still together. Why are they still together if she had the intent to murder him WTF? Excellent question. One I have no answer to. My mother-in-law shot her late husband and was arrested. That's not how he died, though. They got back together and he eventually died from a cardiac event. People are intense. With a .303? Like a Lee Enfield rifle? WTF your parents get in a fight and your mom's first thought is all, for queen and country. Happy is such a strong word. Haha. Ha. My father actually laughs about it these days. Super healthy stuff. Ha ha ha. Hey babe. Remember when you wanted to shoot me in the face and actually pulled the trigger, but lol there were no bullets, lmao. Something like that haha, ha, but with a hint of Stockholm Syndrome in there too. Discovered that my sister stole my father's $25,000 Rolex not more than 24 hours after he died. I only discovered it when her and her husband made a frivolous purchase and I wondered where they got their money since they were always broke and begging my parents for money. I got suspicious, it hit me that she might have stolen and sold the Rolex. Had the paperwork, ran a track on the sales history and discovered it had been sold to a pawn shop down the street from where my sister lives. Went to the pawn shop and after a bit of persuasion got them to tell me who sold it to them and it was my sister. Me and my mom disowned her. Just found out the other day that it wasn't my neighbor's dad who senselessly shot and killed my dog. It was his son, who I was close friends with. He did it on purpose purpose. He knew how much that dog meant to me too. I also found out the other day where he lives. He's a meth head now so I'll just let nature or the police do their thing. My former wife, now ex, and I were having problems. I was certain she was cheating on me. I found her notes where she was figuring out and had added up how much I was worth dead. My mom received birthday cards with money in them for years from her parents. She kept the cards with the money in them, saving to buy a piano, sentimental reasons. My sister, who has repeatedly stolen from family members, found the collection of cards, money and took them. My mom only wanted the cards back when she realized what happened. My sister denied everything. Fuck you, Emily. My coworker lets her dog hump her leg every morning till, he releases, while she has her coffee which has stayed with me since I heard it. I can't think of anything else when they talk to me. The shit some people admit man. You wouldn't be able to torture this information out of me. I completely understand you were simply answering the question asked but I am begging you to never share this again. Because for the rest of my life I have to wonder how many people are this sick and can function normally. I had a high school teacher who told the class she didn't get her chihuahua neutered and sometimes had to finish it, for its sake. Who the fuck admits that to the class they teach? I was pretty close with my youngest uncle growing up, at least in pictures, he was in his mid-twenties when I was like five for context. One day when I was in middle school he just stopped coming around completely. My entire family told us kids that he was backpacking around the nation. In high school I was going a genealogy project on my grandfather, his dad, and accidentally found my uncle's name on the sex offender registry. Come to find out he was running a CP ring and had served 16 years in federal prison. He's out now and my family pretends nothing happened. I stay far away. Graduated boot camp and wondered why my brother wouldn't talk to me. Turns out he was fucking my ex while I was there instead of delivering my letters. Guess guilt ate him up and he thought it was simpler to keep up the lie and not have a brother, right up until an old friend from my hometown told me what happened. My grandfather beat someone to death. My dad was an only child but my grandmother was once pregnant with my dad's younger brother. When she was six months pregnant, someone in construction equipment ran over the car she was driving and she lost the baby. 
While she was in the hospital, my grandfather found the guy and beat him to death. From what I understand, he was in jail for about a week before he was released. Apparently, he claimed temporary insanity due to the circumstances. I learned all this about four years ago when my brother was researching family history and asked my grandfather about it. I've always seen him as a nice, little old man. Found out after his death that my great uncle was a grand wizard in the KKK. Opened a chest in his attic with photos from rallies, lynchings, and cross burnings all around some rural part of Alabama. We were actually horrified by the discovery and suddenly realized why he was so negative towards his black hospice nurse who was otherwise kindhearted and caring with him and the family. Edit. Since a very large number of you want to keep calling me racist, telling me how much of a fuck up I was for burning everything. We, as in my family, I was 16 at the time and had no real say in what the adults, elders decided. We decided to burn all of it out of intense shame for what we discovered. We held prayer vigils through our local church for the people affected by his hatred. Had I been older, I might have taken some of the more damning photos and forwarded them to people who could have brought closure to victims. I made this post at great risk to remaining in my family as they would still see this as romanticizing his actions. To my family, simply speaking his name is done so at great risk to your standing on wills remaining part of the family. So yes, I do feel like it's too late because the only thing I have is that my uncle was a member of the KKK for an unknown amount of time before 1950. My family has prided itself in being very inclusive towards other races, ethnic backgrounds. My seventh generation great-grandfather was a member of the Underground Railroad. Several of my other great aunts and uncles were vocal figureheads of the civil rights movement. They acted as anyone with that much history behind them would in a moment of shock, they destroyed. Blame them if you wish but please stop blaming me. I didn't make any decisions, and for me it's too late to report anything because I don't have any useful information on something that happened a very long time ago for me. I do sincerely apologize to anyone who sees their chances for closure going up in flames, but I can assure you that for how many other clansmen I saw in those photos, surely some of their families have already submitted evidence after their passing. My uncle has literally been deleted from our family history, even in such detail as to remove his gravestone so that people cannot leave flowers for him. My brother was stealing money from father who had dementia. This went on for a year and the I found out about it was because the bank who had my father's mortgage called me wondering why it hadn't been paid in six months. My father's bank account went into the negative around this time too and when I confronted my brother about it he said well, I gotta pay my bills. I was about to take control of all the accounts and make sure Shot got back on track but my father ended up in the hospital and died shortly after that. My brother also stole some of my inheritance too. In the end, he stole over $5,000 from his dying father. So my grandmother, who's been estranged from my family for a long time now for a multitude of reasons, has this weird thing where she has to share food with people. Are you ordering steak at the restaurant? Well oh boy she's gotta order the same thing even if she doesn't like steak. Try her drink, it's really good. Take the first bite of chicken to let her know if it's, any good. This always really annoyed me cause I hate sharing food. One day I brought it up to my mom and she was like, oh yeah. Grandma is afraid of being poisoned, so she wants other people to try it first. So let me get this straight. Grandma thinks someone is trying to poison her so she has me try the food first? And it makes so much sense looking back because she literally would not take a bite of anything she ordered until someone else had a bite first. Thanks grandma. In high school, one of my best friend's date raped his girlfriend then dumped her. The next day at school the girl was crying asking her friends what she did wrong. She did nothing wrong. The guy had been my friend and I never spoke to him again. Found a scrapbook of my mom and a guy the first didn't recognize from her immediately post-college days. Turns out he was a long-term boyfriend of hers who killed himself when she broke up with him. My grandfather found his body. I learned at age 20, by finding the book, Shrine to Him. When my grandfather passed away we discovered that he did not exist. His name was not in any government registry. He was a normal citizen, paid taxes, had a license and everything. Lived a long life, married to my grandmother for over 50 years, had multiple children, everything normal. Still to now, no one knows who he really was and why he had a false name.
I found out that the reason why one of my uncles didn't want to go back to Korea when he retired was that he couldn't he was fearful for political reprisals if he tried to return. Turned out his brother was part of the group that assassinated the S. Korean president back in 1979 and his own innocence was never proven so he was in fear of getting arrested if he ever tried to go back. Link. After my husband died in 2020 I found out he had been having an affair with a 30-year-old. He was 55. She apparently aborted his baby. Everything he told me about his prior life was a lie. Second marriage for both of us. And he had been having sex with men since he was in his early 20s. To sum it up, I didn't know this man at all. We had been together 10 years and married for 6. I just found out my aunt and uncle slept together a few years ago. And somehow my dad is the bad guy for cutting them both off tears of joy edit. For context, they were brother and sister. Not a non-blood related married couple. I said something in general about horses one time. My good friend just kinda shrugged and said huh. My uncle got fucked to death by a horse. What the hell. Turns out my friend's uncle was the Mr. Hands guy from the Seattle area. My friend was like oh yeah. There's a whole movie about it and everything. It's called Zoo. Some town called Enumclaw, Washington is where this happened. I did look it up to see what he was talking about, since he just blindsided me with the whole story. I don't really know why someone would claim such a thing if it weren't true, but perhaps he just wanted to shock me. We don't really communicate anymore, due to changing jobs. Casually coming across a Mr. Hands reference on Reddit was not on my bingo card for today. As a Washingtonian, this is my favorite story to tell people. I try to sneak in references to it in the most mundane conversations. Almost nobody believes this is true until I show them the story. The other guy who filmed it, and then drove the uncle to the hospital where he died, could not be prosecuted. They couldn't prove it as animal cruelty, just a misdemeanor trespassing charge. This got the WA lawmakers to finally outlaw bestiality, and that other guy moved to Tennessee to continue to fuck horses. It's still legal to do so in lots of states in the South. Really wish I hadn't read that last sentence. Legal as in not explicitly illegal. There's not laws in the South somewhere saying you can fuck horses. For whatever that's worth. The kid that bullied me in grade 5-6. Turns out his father was molesting him and his brother throughout their childhood. I looked up all my bullies. They all have extensive criminal records. I shudder to think what their home life was like. I remember one kid in my classroom that stunk. His clothes were always ratty, and everyone laughed at him and ostracized him. He was a big kid and despite his size he never acted out except once in the middle of class when a teacher told him, in front of everyone, that he needed to shower. It wasn't until I was an adult that I found out how neglected he had been. I tried to tell my kids to be nice to anyone who is different. We don't know what their story is, and differences are what make us unique. This wasn't just a stinky kid. It was a kid raising himself. When I was 17 I dated someone who told me when he was drunk that not only would he probably hit me one day, and just wanted me to be prepared, but he also used to rape his little brother. Every now and then I remember that moment and it just, floors me how dangerous that kid was. My best friend confessed to me that he has a child as a result of a long distance affair in another country. He has three kids in the US and is in a toxic marriage. His wife doesn't know. I'll be out late, honey, got a thing in Argentina for the weekend. A work colleague appeared on the front page of a national newspaper for a life of fraudulent qualifications. He claimed medical and law degrees, was a brigadier in the army, reserves, and was the CEO for a major Heath fund. He actually was a brigadier in the army reserves but that and the Heath fund role were largely built on the fraudulent qualifications and a progression of jobs also based on this claims. In reality, the only qualification he actually held was as a mortuary assistant. Not even his wife knew. The fraudulent degrees had been gained when he was in the Army Reserves recruiting and he had access to submitted position applications. He came undone when he applied for a government job and some flags were raised by the recruitment people. He tried to withdraw the application but didn't realize that an application for a government role has the same weight as a statutory declaration and cannot be withdrawn. It all went south very quickly and he ended up doing jail time. The absolute fucking balls to apply for government work while spinning these lies. 
George Santos Found a folder of porn on my best friend's computer in high school. All bestiality. About the biggest secret that I know about somebody that they don't know I know. Lol nearly same story for me. Me and a friend were learning how to use torrents, and he had a rodeo buddy stay the night before I visited. We looked in the delete bin and saw he had downloaded bestiality of women getting horsed. I then told my friend isn't your horse boarded on his farm? Immediately we rescued his horse and boarded him at a family farm 40 minutes away. I wasn't close to this person but I did hang out with them a few times. The best man at my wedding had another really close friend who turned out to be a serial killer. It messed him up really badly. He already had mental health issues and this sent him over the edge. I can't even talk to him anymore. I miss you man. She was my best friend of seven years, we had literally been through it all together. I moved out of state with my now husband, but she convinced us both to move back to be closer with her, after about a year. We had no real ties to the state we had tried out, so we said screw it, let's go back, she's basically family. We were all so happy to be reunited. She was over almost every night for dinner, we all laughed and talked and had a blast. Best year of my life. Then slowly, she started trying to turn my husband and I against each other. Anytime we had an argument, like any couple does, she would text each of us about how right we were, trying to foster animosity between the two of us. With me, she started talking about how she had a plan B for us, that if my husband and I couldn't make it work, I could move in with her and we'd live happy lives together. With my husband, she started talking about her infertility issues and how she wanted to have a kid just like him, she just needed a sperm donor. This all happened at around the same time, and my husband and I compared texts and figured it out. She wanted to take his sperm and have a baby with me. When confronted about it she refused to admit anything and started lashing out at both of us. It got to the point where she would show up unannounced, banging on the door, demanding a place in our home. It was so terrifying and panic-inducing that we ended up having to move and change our phone numbers. I guess it's so disturbing because I had never had a friend like her only to find out that she, well she cared about me, but in such an unhealthy and scary way. But yeah, that's my story. Husband and I are great now by the way. But he shot his friend in the foot on purpose. They were teens and playing with a gun while drunk, stupid I know. And he accidentally shot his friend in the foot. Except it wasn't an accident. He admitted to it being on purpose later. Edit. No this isn't the event that happened in your small American town and we don't know each other. I'm not even an American and guns are like super illegal here. I have no idea how he acquired it. He could probably go to jail just on the merit of that alone. And from us Europeans, are you guys okay? This isn't a normal thing and you guys shouldn't relate to it. Ex-roommate and good friend got kicked out for not paying rent. A couple months later a girl goes missing after her shift at Wendy's and turns up murdered. Guy confesses while on mushrooms to police and is released due to his condition when admitting it. Ran into him a couple weeks after and I could tell something was up. Turned himself in sober the next day. I used to go to work, leaving my girlfriend at the house with him. You think you know someone. Looking back 15 years later, and it all adds up. One of my favorite teachers in high school turned out to be a pedophile who had been raping the same boy for five years. My, former, best friend cheated on his wife, multiple times. I found out because he tried getting me to cheat on my wife, who he was the best man at for our wedding. Completely fucked. My mother got very drunk one day and confessed to me that my father raped her and that's how she became pregnant with me. My mom paid the guy who shot the bullet at my wife, then gf at time, when we were 18. Quick edit. This is way too late but for the many people in the replies assuming I'm a man, I'm not. Well off the bat, it was a poorly executed hit, thank God, and she obviously recovered pretty well. Unfortunately not the first time there was a hit put on her though, same guy was paid to take out her mother while she was pregnant with her but ended up killing her uncle instead, who had put himself in front of her mom. He got away with it due to the severe negligence and corruption that was rampant in the local police force at the time and the one who hired the hitman was the then mayor's drug-addicted and alcoholic slob of son who had some petty vendetta and bad history with my wife's mother. Said slob was also my mom's favorite lover and after he died, of a severe OD mind you, 
She essentially had some sort of psychotic break or something, mental health issues run in the family, and it kicked off a domino effect of erratic behaviors on her part. Still to this day we don't really know her true motivation but we've pretty much agreed that it probably had something to do with her losing her obsessive control over my life, which was primarily thanks to my wife. My mom's dead now but we didn't know for sure it was her. Until she admitted it in her suicide letter to me, so unfortunately she basically got away with it woman shrugging sorry if this is a bit long-winded lol. Wait am I reading this right? The same shitty hitman that your mother hired to kill your 18-year-old girlfriend was also hired 18 years earlier to kill her mother while girlfriend was in the womb? I had to reread like three times. This is the most insane thing I've read. Sorry about your town government and family trying to kill your wife since before she was born. My uncle was arrested for a cold case rape, muter from 1972. He always seemed like a nice guy. Shot himself in the head right before sentencing. Link. He was not that close, but he was a friend and our veterinarian, until he lost his license for doing all the ketamine that was supposed to be for the animals. Met a super nice guy at a networking event when I just starting out in tech. He had a ton of connections and was a nice family man. Super rich. Eventually we became friends and he was acting as a mentor figure to me in the industry. Went over to his massive new house, met his family, etc. He had the demeanor and looked like Al Borland from Home Improvement, to give you an idea. Like four years later I was looking at the sex offender registry map for my local area while I was shopping for houses. Lo and behold, his house popped up. In the early 2000s he was convicted of co-running a commercial child porn sales site. Served five years for it in federal prison. I found out that my aunt who was 13 at the time was raped by her uncle, my great uncle, and had a baby in a cellar in the basement of her house. The baby didn't make it so she and her little sister buried it there. Years later, when the aunt, who had repressed those memories, had a baby she remembered it all. When her family found out she was labeled the slut of the family. My dad's side is garbage. Just after my sixth anniversary, I found a video on my husband's tablet from a hidden camera that showed my 14-year-old niece nude. I called the police immediately. He never came home again. He's in prison now. In one moment I realized I had no clue who I was married, and had a child with. And I yeeted his ass into the sun. Edit. Added a missing word. That my late grandfather may or may not have shaken his baby to death. A baby that would be my uncle. My ex friend dated a guy who was raped as a kid by his neighbor who was an elderly woman. The friend didn't react or comfort him when he told the story, she shrugged it off and started complaining about random stuff. I was really shocked tbh. Guys who got raped by women aren't treated anywhere near the way they should be.